Cardiovascular disease is known as the number one cause of death globally. It represents about 30% of all global deaths in 2010. And in cardiovascular disease, the major contributor is coronary heart disease. When we talk about primary events, almost 70% of these are primary events. Now when we talk about India as such, in India, ischemic heart disease and cerebrovascular disease are actually the leading causes of premature deaths when estimated in 2010 in terms of the number of years of life lost. The InterHeart study was a major landmark trial and what it actually demonstrated was that there was an exponential rise in myocardial infarction risk with added risk factors. If you look at, they had basically nine risk factors which they evaluated and they found that the risk of myocardial infarction increases by about 26 times when all the nine risk factors are added. Then you talk about age, which is actually a non-modifiable risk factors, and after the age of 55, the risk of ischemic heart disease almost doubles. The prospective urban-rural epidemiological study was aimed to assess the prevalence, the awareness, and the control of hypertension worldwide by measuring the blood pressure, it extended across five continents and about 17 countries. They had rural and urban communities both, and the study population was extremely large, almost 1.5 lakh individuals. And what did they find? They actually wanted to find what was the percentage of people in all kinds of countries who were actually consuming the four key proven medications which are known to help us in prevention of coronary heart disease and stroke. And they found that in countries like in India, the number of people who were actually consuming it was only about 10 to 20 percent. So, compliance is a major issue. And how do we address this problem? Most urban societies have been known to have elevated levels of risk factors. Greater than 99 percent of the control population in the inter-heart study had at least one cardiovascular disease risk factor. About 90% of individuals in the UK above 50 years would have one of these risk factors. So the focus has been traditionally on applying a cardiovascular prevention in the highest risk individuals. Most cardiovascular events would occur in those with average levels of risk. So there are a lot of therapeutic interventions available in the market. We have antihypertensive agents, we have cholesterol lowering drugs, we have antiplatelet drugs, we have OHAs to control the diabetes. And there is no paucity of interventions. However, cardiovascular disease is still on the rise. So what are we going to do about this risk of cardiovascular disease, this risk of stroke? What they found, the data said that the risk reduction associated with individual interventions. For example, if you control the blood pressure, you would have a risk reduction in coronary heart disease to the tune of about 20-25%, a reduction in stroke incidence by about 35-40%. to 40%. The same way you controlled dyslipidemia, you would have a risk reduction in the tune of 20-40%, to 40%, platelet aggregability. So all of these alone, treating one factor alone was not considered adequate because you only ended up doing a risk reduction about 30% intermediate level. So came the concept of what about doing a risk reduction with combination therapy? So this idea, when it was formulated, the European Heart Journal published that if you had a 10% reduction in the blood pressure, and along with that you had a 10% reduction in the total cholesterol levels, you would actually end up doing a 45% reduction in cardiovascular disease, much better than a 20 or 30% risk reduction. So, it, the concept came that a better risk reduction is possible. Now, they decided to combine a couple of mu more agents and they found that if you combined aspirin, beta blockers, uh, cholesterol lowering drugs and ACE inhibitors, you would actually end up doing a risk reduction of about 75%. So the strategy was to reduce cardiovascular disease by more than 80%. If you look at the effect of drug combinations on mortality, if you used a single agent alone versus a combination of agents, you would have a much better reduction in mortality. 
Now, a major issues in all countries, and especially in our country, is compliance to therapy. When you put any patient, or you try doing it yourself, if you're on five, six pills, it's really difficult to be compliant to the therapy. Now, this was a study in which they started patients on three medications. And at one month, I repeat, it's only at one month they found that one third of these patients had actually discontinued the medication. So what was the efficacy? If you're not taking your medicine, it really cannot act. So if that is the scenario at one month, you can imagine what will be the scenario at one year. And non-compliance is directly related to the survival. You're non-compliant, it's not going to work, your survival is going to go down. So poor outcomes are going to be observed. So this is what gave the idea for the development of polypill. So they had a lot of trials, the TIPS one, the Indian polycap study, and finally, it resulted in polypill being launched in the Indian market in 2010. So this is one capsule with multiple drugs. What does it contain? Well, it has three antihypertensive agents, hydrochlorothiazide in a dose of about 12.5, etinolol in a dose of about 50, ramipril in 5 mg dose, a lipid-lowering drug, simvastatin, and one antiplatelet drug, aspirin in a dose of 100 mg. So can we, the question arises, you have a combination drug, there's a single pill to take. Can we benefit from polypill? Yes, we can. The patients who have pre-existing disease, such as those who have already had a heart attack or have some form of heart disease, <coughs> stroke, peripheral arterial disease, and diabetes, would benefit from this agent. Again, those without pre-existing disease, elderly patients would also benefit. We have seen that 95% of deaths from ischemic heart disease and stroke occur in people who are elderly, above the age of 55 years, regardless of their risk factors. So we have a very large population out there who can benefit. Now, when you have essentially combined so many agents, the question arises, would you, what would be the bioavailability of these agents? You've combined a lot of drugs together. Are they bioavailable? So the study was conducted to check the bioavailability. And on all counts, it was found that it was similar. Again, the TIPS-1 study had a nine-arm study. It was multi-centric. Uh, extended across about 50 centers in India, and they gave active treatment for 12 weeks, followed up for 16 weeks, and looked at the endpoints, that is the impact on the blood pressure, the heart rate, the lipids, the urine thromboxane B2, and also evaluated the safety and the tolerability of such a drug. So these were the various arms that they had, and polycap was given in about 400 patients. The baseline characteristics were similar across all the groups, and when you looked at the mean changes in the blood pressure, polycap fared much better on all counts. If you looked at the impact of etinolol on the heart rate, again, there was a similar change. If you looked at the impact on LDL cholesterol levels, again, there was a similar reduction in total cholesterol in the polypal arm. The antiplatelet efficacy was also found to be similar. <coughs> Safety. Polypill, when compared with the other groups, had a similar rate of adverse events, so there was no increase in adverse events. The result summary, again, it was very well tolerated and gave similar outcomes when the drugs were used alone. So, what is the place of polycap in present day? What is its place in therapy? Four out of five deaths from cardiovascular diseases occur in developing countries like ours. There are millions of patients at risk throughout the world. There are about 50 million with stroke and another 50 million with ischemic heart disease. So a lot of lives can be saved if we give them just this one single pill. So it is a unique fixed dose combination consisting of three antihypertensives, one lipid lowering and one anticoagulant. It has shown efficacy and safety in a large number of randomized trials and there are extremely encouraging communications about the drug. So I believe that polycap is a drug in a country like ours is extremely effective and can be used to improve compliance, to reduce the pill burden on the patient and to provide reduction in coronary heart disease incidence and also in the reduction in ischemic stroke. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much.